we're downtown on a mildly cold Sunday morning outside of uh, JTV Studios and uh, just kind of getting out, getting some exercise in. And of course, I forgot my gimbal. So who knows how this will turn out. Love that sign, it's so happy. Look at that building. That is currently a restaurant called Bella Note. And I need to get down here and check this out. Tilted is an arcade bar with a lot of retro uh, games from back in the day. And of course, they've got beverage. Love that mural. Greetings from Jackson. Woohoo, nice and cold out, but uh, not as cold as it has been and they're supposed to get some snow later. So it's gonna be interesting to see how today unfolds. It is mid-February, 2022. Got some nice classic music playing in the background. I love the theming on uh, the hot dogs. The Dog Father presents culinary masterpiece located downtown Jackson, starring the Chicago dog, crinkled fries and draft beer, enjoyed by lover, lawyers, burgers. Oh, it's uh, enjoyed by lawyers, barbers, caddies, and more. Love the media, the movie theme on the post. Photos I've seen of this thing in the newspaper online. This used to be the Big Dog Hotel back in the day. It was uh, for a long time afterwards, uh, office space where consumers power for some years. I love this mural. The car, the arms. I really like what the artist did in creating this piece. Tyler Voorhees work from uh, Fenville. The monumental Romanesque Revival Church was erected in 1859, according to the plans by architect Horatio White in Syracuse, New York. It is this congregation's third church in 1871. The building was raised eight feet to accommodate lower level classrooms. In 1861, on the way, on the eve of departing for duty of the Civil War, Jackson Blair Cadets and the Jackson County Rifles gathered with their families in the crowded sanctuary at Detroit, at Detroit's Fort Wayne. The troops joined the 8th and 9th Michigan Infantries, respectively, beginning. In the 1840s, with the anti-slavery movement, the congregation actively participated in social reform against, most notably, temperance and civil rights. Abolitionists in Jackson in the 1830s and 50s, a strong anti-slavery presence grew in Jackson. Opponents of slavery advocated their cause with prominent speakers and public meetings. The courthouse, located the southwest corner of what became the intersection of Michigan Avenue and Jack Street was a favorite venue in 1839. Seymour Treadwell, an underground railroad contributor and abolitionist author, spoke there. Self-emancipated abolitionist Henry Bibb visited Jackson in 1850. He spoke at the courthouse on the subject of human rights in March 1854 before Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act that permitted new states to decide if they would allow slavery, a group of abolitionists met at the courthouse to discuss the proposed act and formally declared their opposition. Uh, in the years leading up to Civil War, several Jackson's newspapers supported the anti-slavery cause. Three were printed near this site. Once a corner of the town's public square, the Jacksonburg Sentinel, Jackson's first newspaper, originated here in 1837. William Deland and Norman Allen, two men, 
who assisted fugitives on the Underground Railroad were among its founders. The newspaper criticized the diabolical slave trade. The American Freeman founded by Underground Railroad participant William Sullivan and his brother Nicholas in the late 1830s was the first strictly abolitionist paper in Michigan. In the 1850s, was printed at the square. Ed Editor Charles Deland, also an Underground Railroad member, pled no more slavery compromises. Jackson Public Square, March 30, 1830, a commission appointed to choose Jackson County's seat of government reported a territorial road called the St. Joseph's Road was last, where it was last winter laid, where the road crosses the Grand River, a flourishing village is commenced. Named Jacksonburg, the village was surveyed and plotted that year. Residents proclaimed the town the future site of the new state capital. The plat included a public square at the intersection of Jackson Street and Territorial Road, present day Michigan Avenue. By the 1880s, the square was a bustling business district comprising of the county courthouse, the first congregational church, and three commercial blocks, including the Blackwell building known as the Old Post. can't really see him there. That is Jack. I guess that is maybe uh, the new mascot of Jackson, I guess. I don't know. Jack's nap. I've got it. Do you? Goose Lake Park. Goose Lake Festival. That was the big dog rock event of the 60s. Out by where I grew up at, out in Grass Lake. Look at the band. Savoy Brown, Jethro Tall, Joe Coker, 10 years after, Savage Graves, Mountain, Chicago, Bob Seeger. Woohoo, Alice Cooper! Wow, that would have been epic. This uh, bluegrass ish is down at the, at the, uh, the field department store used to be. I'm intrigued by this. I don't know. I've seen kind of music they play. I don't think that was something I'd be interested in.